It was all out of love, guys. The worst person ever. And he helped launch a private investment firm. That was Sam's fault, that his strategy was different. $10 million or more in a statement released by the weirdo parents. What's going on, guys? So Bloomberg Today actually released an article supposedly about the lawyer, the mastermind behind our dear friend Sam Bankman frieds whole defense strategy, which obviously was a huge, huge fail. And this whole thing is actually pretty curious because the mastermind behind the defense strategy basically says that Scam Sam himself ruined the defense strategy. He's saying that Sam went against his advice. So I'll go over the article from Bloomberg and some of this guy's background. He's apparently a longtime family friend where the friendship goes back decades. And apparently Joseph Bankman, Scam Sam's dad, was pushing, advocating for Stanford University to hire David Mills. So David Mills, along with being a family friend, is also a Stanford law professor. Currently sitting at 76 years old, David Mills started working at Stanford Law School in after Joseph Bankman was pushing for him to be hired. Apparently David Mills made a name for himself back in the 80s as a white collar defense lawyer gaining fame from securities fraud cases. Apparently even the Toronto scammer Elizabeth Holmes wanted to hire David Mills, which he says he turned down. But he took on the case with Scam Sam as a family favor. And now Professor David Mills thinks that, well, their friendship might be over because he suspects with all sincerity that his parents think that he's innocent, that Scam Sam is innocent. And if Joseph and Barbara wholeheartedly believe in Sam's innocence, well, they need someone to blame. He feels that maybe that blame is on him for not getting Sam off. Now, strangely enough, David Mills thinks Sam is innocent, clearly biased in his assessment, though he claims the verdict was inevitable. It's like he's trying to play both sides of the coin here. David Mills did not think the trial was fair at all. And I quote, I think he is innocent because he did not form the intent to cause harm. Well, Mr. David Mills, so close to the family, might just be a little bit biased. He even said himself, I'm never going to let myself get emotionally involved on a very deep personal level in a case like this ever again. I'm just not doing it. So yeah, probably slightly biased given his personal connection. Honestly, I wonder if this guy actually spoke with Bloomberg just to save face, to help his reputation, because potentially it's been tarnished by Sam, by his association with Joe Bankman and Barbara Freed, where he told Bloomberg he only took this unwinnable case as a favor to the parents. To me, the whole thing seems odd, where David Mills said that Sam may be on the top of the list for the worst witness ever, the worst person ever that he had ever seen do a cross-examination, and blaming Sam for the whole thing because he says that Sam veered away from the lawyer's strategy, that he was advised on how to handle the tough questions coming from the prosecutors during cross-examination. And of course, during cross-examination, there were many memorable moments where Danielle Sassoon, the badass prosecutor, basically tortured and demolished Sam on the stand, with many characterizing the whole cross-examination as death by a thousand cuts. As Daniel Sassoon showed many statements, videos, and even text messages made by Sam Bankman Freed that essentially contradicted his whole testimony. And of course, this was all after the jury had heard from Nishad Singh, Gary Wang, and of course, the beautiful Caroline Ellison, where they all pointed the finger at Sam. So David Mills says that rather than admit to all the statements that he said to Caroline, Gary Wang and Nishad, rather than admit that they were his statements in fact, that Sam instead chose himself to quibble over how prosecutors were phrasing his statements. And of course, Sam claimed to not remember a lot of things that he said, despite many of those statements being recorded on messages and even during media interviews. That all of this, of course, made Sam appear evasive. But David Mills is basically saying that was Sam's fault, that his strategy was different. So if David Mills would have had his way, the whole defense would have admitted to everything, including admitting to everything the prosecution said and the witnesses. He says his focus would have been on trying to convince the jury that he was acting on good faith to try to save the FTX crypto exchange, where David Mills says that he thought there was a nice story there, but that he can't just tell a story where all these people are lying where you have a bunch of people, the star witnesses, all saying one thing, but then you have Sam saying something else. With David Mills adding that with a story like that, where you contradict multiple witnesses, you have no shot, zero. He added that he thought it was impossible to win a case where three or four founders were saying, were all saying that you did it. 
that even if they're all lying through their teeth, it's really, really hard to win a case like that. And apparently Mr. Mills had enough of Sam. He wasn't there at all when the jury gave their guilty verdict. And apparently Mr. Mills had a really hard time finding help to defend Sam, that he was turned down by several law firms up until Mark Cohen and Christian Everdell. Now this guy helped defend Madame Epstein. So if you're willing to defend Madame Epstein after all she did, then obviously you don't care who your client is as long as you're getting paid big bucks. But supposedly David Mills didn't charge the family anything. When approaching law firms, he supposedly told them that he's representing the most hated man, but not orange man. And that most people guessed correctly that it was Sam Bankman Freed. Now this guy's pretty wealthy. So when he was called by Joseph Bankman to help the family, he flew his private plane directly to the Bahamas to help out the family. He claims it is all out of friendship, unadultered friendship. Adding, well, maybe not totally true, 88% friendship and 12% criminal law because he loves criminal law, which is what he teaches at Stanford University. And he claims that neither he nor his investment group, Fortress, ever put money in FTX. So it was all out of love and friendship. That's nice. So how did David Mills come to represent Sam? Well, apparently Joseph Bankman, when the bank run was happening in November of 2022, Joseph Bankman called David Mills, but not about legal advice. He was actually looking for names, a list of people who could potentially invest in FTX, saying that Joseph Bankman, knowing David Mills' connections to Silicon Valley, Wall Street, and because of the bank run on FTX crypto exchange, he was looking for financial backers, investors, to try to salvage FTX. So it wasn't just Sam looking for investors to help out. It was also Joseph Bankman. It's pretty interesting. But David Mills never specifies if he actually found any financial backers for FTX. Now I gotta say that Professor Mills actually seems like a really nice guy. He gives off this kind of cool grandpa or cool uncle kind of vibe. He's pictured with a hat that has a number 3419 on it that's the number of people that he's helped to get out of prison. Part of his philanthropic efforts to help people who can't afford a good lawyer. Even inviting a guy he helped get out of jail to his own wedding. Where that fellow went on to graduate college and open up his own chain restaurant. Where he caters and feeds a class where Professor Mills teaches at Stanford. All part of his legal and philanthropic efforts. And he's been doing this for a really long time. For example, he was a major driver and a financial backer to reform a controversial law in California called the Three Strikes Law. And there's no denying that the US legal system needs a lot of reform. It's obviously multi-tiered. One guy can go to jail for 30 years for smoking a joint and others can set buildings on fire, throw essentially grenades at cop cars and get away with it. Professor David Mills is also managing director at Fortress Investment Group and he helped launch a private investment firm. So he's doing pretty well. He's doing so well that he's donated $10 million or more to Stanford Law School. That is way more money than Joseph Bankman and Barbara Free donated using FTX money. On top of that, according to Bloomberg, he's donated more than that, so more than $10 million to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Furthermore, on the Stanford Law School profile, it says that he founded and served as the first director of the school's renowned clinical education program used to prepare the students for real world challenges and legal responsibilities. A clinical program at law school is like a proctorship where you're under the supervision and you get real world experience where the majority of the work is with low income folks. So it's pretty nice that he started the program and kind of surprising that Stanford didn't have that already. In the bio it says he started at Stanford Law School in 2000, but Bloomberg says that Joseph Bankman was pushing for him to be hired as early as 97. Prior to that, he was a lecturer at Rutgers and Santa Clara Law School. He sits on multiple boards of nonprofits and is a chair of the board of directors at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. So generally speaking, he seems like a decent guy, even though he disappointed Joseph Bankman and Barbara Freed, because like he said, he was concerned that when people believe in their child's innocence, like Bankman and Freed, that they need someone to blame. And he feels like he's that candidate, feeling responsible for Sam being in jail, basically saying that they blame him. In a statement released by the weirdo parents, they say, we love David Mills. He has been a fantastic lawyer. He's also been an amazing steadfast friend. And we will be grateful to him for being with us in a dark time, forever. So who knows, Mr. David Mills might feel really bad but it doesn't sound like they blame him. If anything, they only have themselves to blame. Overall, very interesting to learn about Professor David Mills. Interesting to learn that Joseph Bankman called him to help him find financial backers. It's pretty interesting. All right, guys, well, I'll leave it here. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Please don't forget to smash the like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.